Let's see if you know enough basic algebra to solve this problem. So what we have here is something called a two-variable linear equation. So we have an equation here. So anytime you see an equal sign, that's an equation. And we are dealing with two variables, x and y. And uh, these linear equations basically uh, represent lines. Okay, So you could actually graph these two equations and where these lines cross would be the actual solution. So that's a little bit of a hint here for those of you that don't know how to solve this. But if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need a help in math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so once again, we have a two-variable linear system. And you study this uh, type of stuff in a basic algebra course, even as early as pre-algebra. So hopefully, you remember how to solve this problem. But uh, let's take a look at the solution. The correct answer here is the following. x is equal to negative 3 and y is equal to 2. And we could express this answer this way as well as the coordinate negative 3, 2. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like Mr. U2 Math Man, I don't even remember this from my algebra days. What's going on? Well, this is not that difficult. Matter of fact, uh, let's see how to solve this right now. All right, so here's the problem. And uh, notice we have two equations. We have two variables, x and y. Here's y and here's an x right there. Here's an x. So in general, okay, uh, on how many variables you have, right? So here I have two variables I'm looking to solve for, um, x and y. That's how many equations you're going to need in, um, to solve for two variables. In other words, you're going to need uh, two equations to solve for two different variables, all right? So just kind of something to keep in mind. If you have two equations with three variables, generally that's not going to be enough. You're going to need that third equation. Of course, there's always exceptions uh, to this, and, and there's kind of some other kind of details I'm uh, kind of not putting into my comments here right now because I don't want to kind of overwhelm you. But in general, the number of variables you're looking to solve for, that's how many equations you're going to need. Okay, so that's what's going on. And of course, I already talked about these are linear equations, i.e. equations of lines. Now, how can we solve systems or specifically two variable linear systems okay well you have some options here so the first technique that you learn is something called the graphing method so if you have graph uh, paper you can actually kind of clean up each of these equations right here and graph each line and look to see hey where do these lines intersect that point of intersection would be the solution but this is really not that practical of a method but you do need to know it so what you want to do is use algebraic methods and the two primary algebraic methods that you're going to use is the substitution method, okay, and or the uh, elimination uh, linear combination method. So these are your primary tools to solve uh, systems of linear equations algebraically. You need to know both of these super well. And one is not better than the other, and you're going to have to uh, kind of not get stuck. What happens is a lot of students, let's say they just love the substitution method, and they do all problems using the substitution method, and they forget about this uh, method here. You need to know both methods, and they, you know, it all depends on how your problem is structured. But uh, anyways, let's get into this problem, okay? All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is start to kind of clean up this equation. So or the system here. So you can see we have 2 times x minus y equals 3x minus 1. Typically, what we want to see, let me just kind of erase this here, is, and again, I'm speaking in generalities because uh, it all depends on the problem. But in a situation like this, what we kind of want to get is our x's here, our y's here, and then our numbers over here, and then our x's over here, our y's over here equals our numbers. So we want to kind of put our system in this kind of format right here. Okay, so again, line up the variables x, 
align up the variables Y and then have all your numbers to the right. So if your current system is not in that uh, kind of form, just start to clean it up uh, to get it in that form. And then we can kind of see, uh, you know, what's the best options we want to take in terms of substitution or a combination to solve the system. All right, so here I'm going to go ahead and distribute the two uh, to this. So I've got 2x minus 2y is equal to 3x minus 1. And then I have this equation. So let's go ahead and just start uh, to work on cleaning this up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and focus on uh, getting the first uh, equation um, all cleaned up. So in other words, what I mean by cleaning up, I'm going to have all my x's and all my y's and then my numbers here. So let's focus on that. So we have 2x minus uh, 2y is equal to 3x minus 1. So what we really need to do here is just to get the x's, uh, this um, term on this side. So we just simply subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. And when I do that and kind of add down in a column manner, I get 2x minus 3x. That's negative 1x, right? Negative 2y plus nothing, negative 2y. This goes away. The x's go away over here. Negative 1 plus nothing is negative 1. So this is our new cleaned up equation. All right, so we'll come back to this here in a second. But let's go ahead and clean up the second equation now. So right, so we clean this one up. So let's go ahead and get this one in a better form right here, the second equation. So that's what we're going to work on right now. Okay, so again, we have our negative 3x over here, so we'll add a 3x to both sides. So again, I want my x's and y's all together. So uh, when I do this, um, we're going to add down again in a column manner. So 4y plus nothing is 4y. Then here, nothing plus 3x is 3x, and then minus 3 plus nothing is minus 3 uh, equals negative 4. Then uh, the 3x's over here go away. So now I need to move my negative 3 over to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to add positive 3 to both sides of the equation. And you can see I end up with 4y plus 3x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so now we have both of these um, equations kind of cleaned up. So the new version would be the following. Okay, the, again, this was the result of cleaning up that first equation, and this is the result of cleaning up the second equation. Now, notice here we have x and y, y and x. We can just kind of fix that up real quick so we have everything uh, together. So what I'll do is I'll keep the first equation as is, negative uh, x minus 2y is equal to negative 1. And then here I'll just move the x uh, term here and the 4y uh, term over here. So all of our x's and y's are lined up. Okay, so you can see the result of doing that right here. Okay, now it's important that you do get all the variables uh, lined up, i.e. you have all the x's here, or it could be the y's as well, but it's generally x and then y and then your numbers. So at this stage, I mean, we had to kind of do um, a decent amount of work to kind of get it to this uh, point. So now this is where you want to consider what um, approach you want to take to solve this problem. Now, both approaches, the substitution method or the elimination uh, linear combination method are perfectly fine. In this uh, case, it's not so obvious on uh, which approach uh, there is to take. Well, to me, uh, this thing is tipping in the scale of the elimination or linear combination method, and I'll show you exactly why here in a second. But if you're looking at this, you're like, yeah, I think I'm going to use a substitution method. That's perfectly fine as well. Okay, so I'm going to um, take a look at uh, doing this problem uh, using the linear, uh, linear combination method. Now, what does that mean? It means that we need to get um, uh, two of these uh, variable terms, okay, either the x's or the y's, we need to create exact opposites, okay, of one another. And I'm just going to kind of briefly talk through this system. So right here, um, I need to uh, either create a situation where I have like negative x and x, or maybe a negative 3x and a positive 3x. I need to create opposites. Or right here, I have negative 2y and 4y, so maybe I can get a negative 4y and a positive 4y down here, okay? So amongst both of these equations, you're trying to create opposite terms, all right? And you'll see why here in a second. So how do we do that? Well, in this case, all we need to do, uh, the easiest thing to do is just multiply this first equation by 3, 
because when I multiply 3 by this negative x, I'm going to have a negative 3x up on top, and I have this bottom 3x down here, so I will create my opposite uh, term. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I hope you're learning something from this video. And if that's the case, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. This really does help me out on YouTube. Now, if you need additional help in math, make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and get back to the problem. So I'm going to uh, multiply 3 across the board. And when we do that, we have 3 times uh, negative x. Uh, and then this 3 will be 3 times negative 2. That will be a minus 6. And then 3 times uh, this negative 1 will be negative 3. So let's go ahead and take a look at the result of that right now. Okay, so this is the result of uh, distributing this 3 across the board. And again, the reason why I did that is so I could create this situation. Okay, now remember in algebra, uh, you can multiply uh, anything you want to an equation, uh, specifically like a number. Okay, you're not going to break the equation as long as you multiply every single thing in the equation by that number. Okay, again, you need to be creative and look for opportunities like what number uh, would be, you know, a good number to choose such that I can create an opposite. Okay, and right here you have an opposite. And now this is where we can kind of do this linear combination and elimination method. Okay, and uh, the, those terms I'm saying are two ways to describe this method. But linear combination is like I'm going to combine this and this. Think of it like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you know, if you will. Here's your bread. Here we're going to smash these things together. And so that's the linear combination part. And then we're going to have the elimination part. And what's the elimination part? Well, we're trying to eliminate one of the variables. So in algebra, in systems, you can actually create a, um, here's uh, uh, these two equations. If I combine these together, I can create a new equation that is um, basically an equivalent equation for the system. I know that sounds kind of confusing. So uh, anyways, let's just continue to focus on the process here, right? So we got my opposites. Now we can kind of add these uh, together. We can do the linear combination part now. So when we add down in a column matter, we got negative 3x plus a positive 3x, that's zero. Oh, that goes away. And then I have negative 6y plus 4y, that's negative 2y. Negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. So at this point, we eliminated the x uh, variable. Now I have a uh, one equation with one variable, all right? So this I can solve. So I have negative 2y is equal to negative 4. So how do I solve 4y? Easy. All I need to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. Negative 4 divided by negative 2, of course, is positive 2. So y is equal to positive 2. Okay, so that's kind of like the hardest part here. And how do we get x? Well, now that you know that y is equal to negative 2, you could just go back to the system and choose any equation you want, okay, the first one or the second one, and we're going to replace one of the y's, okay, uh, and we're going to choose an equation, and we're going to replace the y with 2 and solve for x. So I think I'm going to go ahead and select the second equation. It will work on the first equation as well. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, so here is our second equation. Again, we know that y is equal to uh, 2, so I'm going to replace this y right here with 2, and you can see that work right there, and then we'll be able to solve for x. All right, so we have 3x plus 4 times 2 is equal to negative 1, so 3x plus uh, 8, 4 times 2 is 8, is equal to negative 1. Subtract 8 from both sides of the equation, I get 3x is equal to negative 9. And to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 3. Negative 9 divided by positive 3 is negative 3. Okay, so we end up with x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to 2. But we can, what does this mean? Well, this means that we want to think in terms of the ordered pair, the point, the coordinate that, repre uh, that represents the solution to the system. Okay, this is the point right here where these two lines cross. So we would like to kind of represent that as the order pair of negative three, two. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. 
So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.